Once upon a time, in the enchanting lands of the Yoruba kingdom, there lived a young girl named Kemi. She was a curious and adventurous soul, with a heart that yearned for exploration and discovery. Kemi's village is known for its vibrant culture and rich traditions, but what set it apart from others was an ancient treasure that had been passed down through generations, the talking drum. The talking drum was a magical instrument that could communicate with the spirits of the land. It was believed to hold the wisdom of the ancestors, and only a chosen few were allowed to play it. One day, as Kemi roamed the lush green fields outside her village, she stumbled upon the hidden cave where the talking drum was kept. As she approached the drum, she felt an inexplicable pull, as if the drum itself was beckoning on her. With a mix of excitement and trepidation, Kemi reached out and gently touched the smooth surface of the drum. In that moment, the drum came alive. It started to emit a soft glow, and its redeeming beats filled the air. To her astonishment, the drum spoke in a melodious voice. Greetings, young one. I am the talking drum. And you, Kemi, have been chosen as my guardian. Embrace your destiny, for I shall grant you the power to communicate with the spirits and seek wisdom from the past. Kemi was both amazed and honored to be chosen by the drum. From that day forward, she practiced diligently, learning to play the ancient rhythms that connected her to the spirit world. With the talking drum as her guide, Kemi embarked on countless adventures that took her to distant lands, meeting creatures of folklore and uncovering long-lost secrets. One day, as Kemi was playing the talking drum by the riverside, a troubled spirit emerged from the water. It was a water nymph, and she lamented about the disappearance of her beautiful underwater kingdom. The once pristine waters had turned murky and polluted, threatening the lives of all aquatic creatures. Kemi's heart went out to the spirit, and with the guidance of the talking drum, she vowed to help restore the water nymph's kingdom. Armed with her bravery and the power of the drum, she set out on a journey to find the source of the pollution and put an end to it. Through dense forests, treacherous mountains, and vast deserts, Kemi followed the clues that the talking drum provided. Along the way, she encountered her friends who joined her in the quest. And together, they faced challenges that tested their determination and friendship. Finally, after days of tireless effort, they reached the polluted river's origin, a factory that was carelessly releasing toxic waste into the water. Kemi knew she had to act swiftly, but she couldn't do it alone. She played a powerful rhythm on the talking drum, calling upon the spirit of the land to aid her in cleansing the river. The ground trembled and the spirit rose from the earth, joining Kemi in her fight against the pollution. With their combined strength, they sealed the factory's source and began purifying the water. The river sparkled once again. The grateful water nymph appeared and her kingdom restored to its former glory. News of Kemi's courageous feat spread far and wide, and she became a revered figure in her village and beyond. She continued to use the talking drum to help those in need and preserve the beauty of her homeland. And so, the adventures of Kemi and the talking drum lived on, their stories inspiring generations to come, reminding them of the importance of bravery, compassion, and the deep connection between humanity and the natural world. Once upon a time, in a small village called Dumdum, lived two best friends, Tarachi and Kelechi. They were inseparable, like the sun and the sky. They laughed together, played together, and they shared their dreams beneath the shade of the ancient mango tree. 
Karachi was a lively young girl with a heart full of warmth and kindness. She had a radiant smile that could brighten the darkest of days. Her laughter was like a melody that danced through the village, bringing joy to everyone who heard it. Kelechi, on the other hand, was a gentle and humble soul. He was known throughout the village for his wisdom and his ability to mend broken things, whether a torn shirt or a troubled heart. He had a heart as big as an African savanna and a spirit as strong as the mightiest lion. But as the years passed, a seed of jealousy began to grow within Tarachi's heart. She noticed that the villagers often praised Kelechi for his skills and wisdom, and it made her feel overshadowed. Tarachi wanted to be admired and respected just like her best friend. One day, Tarachi overheard the villagers talking about a grand festival that was to be held in the village. They said that the person who could create the most beautiful piece of artwork would be named the village artist and receive a special honor. Tarachi's jealousy flared up like a wildfire. She decided that she would prove herself as the best artist and gain the admiration she craved. Tarachi spent days and nights creating a magnificent painting. She used the brightest colors and the finest brushes, determined to outshine Kelechi. When the day of the festival arrived, she proudly displayed her artwork, expecting the villagers to shower her with praise. As the villagers gathered around Tarachi's painting, their faces were filled with confusion and disappointment. Her painting, although colorful, lacked the soul and beauty of Kelechi's creation. Kelechi had painted a breakthrough mural of the African landscape, capturing the essence of their village with every stroke. The villagers cheered for Kelechi, naming him the village artist, and celebrating his masterpiece. Tarachi, standing by her inferior painting, felt a pang of regret and guilt. She realized that her jealousy had blinded her to the true essence of art and friendship. Tarachi went to Kelechi, tears in her eyes and admitted her jealousy and wrongdoing. Kelechi, being the kind-hearted friend that he was, forgave her without hesitation. They embraced and their friendship grew stronger than ever. From that day forward, Tarachi let go of her jealousy and learned the true meaning of friendship. She and Kelechi continued to share their dreams and laughter beneath the shade of the ancient mango tree, knowing that their bond was more precious than any praise or admiration. And so, in the heart of Doom Doom, the tale of Tarachi, the jealous friend, became a story of redemption and the enduring power of true friendship, a story passed down through generations under the sun and stars of Doom Doom village. Long, long, long ago, in the heart of a beautiful kingdom, situated between lush mountains and sparkling rivers called Amotsu, lived a young prince named Ayomide. He was known far and wide for his courage, wisdom and kindness, but there was one thing that weighed him heavily on his heart, the impending task of choosing a bride. In the kingdom of Amotsu, it was a tradition that the gods themselves would guide the prince in selecting a bride. On the eve of his 25th birthday, the most eligible women from all corners of the land were invited to the palace to participate in a series of challenges and tests. These challenges were designed to showcase not just their beauty, but their character, intelligence and spirit. The news of the grand event spread wide around the community, reaching even the humblest villagers. Among those who heard of it was a young woman named Foluke. Foluke lived in a quiet village at the edge of the kingdom, where her kindness and generosity were renowned. Although she was not of humble birth, her heart shone brighter than any jewel, and her spirit was as unyielding as the tallest oak. As preparations for the challenges began, Foluke heard the whispers of doubts from those around her. They told her that she was too ordinary, too simple to catch the eye of the prince. But Foluke paid no heed to their words, for she believed that love and goodness were worth more than all the riches in the world. 
When the day of the challenge arrived, the palace courtyard was adorned with flowers and banners. Prince Ayomide, dressed in a regal attire, greeted each contestant with kindness and respect. As the challenge commenced, Foluke faced them with a heart full of determination. She showcased her intelligence in solving riddles, her compassion in caring for injured birds, and her strength in completing physical feats. Throughout the challenge, Prince Ayomide observed closely as the days went on, he found his attention drawn more and more to Foluke. Her simplicity and genuine nature stood out amidst the glitz and glamour of other contestants. He saw her heart shining through and he felt a connection he couldn't explain. As the last challenge is being concluded, a huge fell over the courtyard. As the prince stepped forward, his gaze fixed on Foluke, with a voice that resonated through the heart of all present, he spoke. The gods have shown me that true beauty lies not in grandeur, but in the purity of heart. I, Ayomide, the prince, have chosen my bride, Foluke, the embodiment of kindness and love. Gaps of surprise and murmurs of approval swept through the crowd. Foluke stood there, her heart pounding, tears of disbelief and joy welling up in her eyes. Prince Ayomide descended from his throne and approached her. Taking her hand in his, he said, In you I have found a partner who understands the true essence of love and compassion. With you I wish to build a kingdom that thrives on these values. And so the prince and Foluke were united in a bond blessed by the gods. Their love story became a legend that echoed through the kingdom for generations to come. A reminder that the purest of hearts could attract the most profound of blessings. With Foluke by his side, Prince Ayomide ruled the kingdom with wisdom, kindness and... <laughs> Once upon a time, in a very small and peaceful village called Otu, lived a brave and curious young girl named Abe. Abe was known far and wide for her curiosity, a threat that often led her into exciting and sometimes dangerous adventures. One sunny morning, Abe decided to explore a dense forest surrounding the village when she stumbled upon an old overgrown pathway. The path led her to a place where an old garnet tree stood, with its branches twisted. Beneath the tree, half buried in the earth, lay a ring. The ring was unlike any she had ever seen before. The ring has gleaming obsidian adorned with intricate patterns. Abe's curiosity got the better of her, and she picked up the mysterious ring. As soon as she slipped it onto her finger, a strange chill ran down her spine and a voice whispered in her ear, Beware, for you now bear the ring of course. Startled but undaunted, Abe decided to learn more about the ring's history. So she visited the village elder called Mama. Mama is a wise woman known for her knowledge of ancient tales and legends. Mama listened to Abe's story and examined the ring with a knowing gaze. She explained that the ring was once possessed by a powerful sorcerer who had used it to bring both fortune and misfortune to those who wore it. Legend had it that the sorcerer's soul was trapped within the ring and whoever wore it would be both blessed and cursed. Even after Mama has told Abe about the ominous tale, Abe wasn't discouraged, rather she felt a strong sense of responsibility. She believed she could harness the ring's power for the greater good of her village. With Mama's guidance, she embarked on a quest to unravel the secrets of the ring, and if possible, free the sorcerer's trapped soul. Abe's journey took her through dense jungles across vast savannas and into the heart of mysterious caves. Along the way, she encountered various challenges from corny trickster spirits to treacherous riddles. Each test sharpened her courage and wit, preparing her for the final trial. At the heart of a desolate forest, Abe faced the ultimate test. She found herself standing before a towering heap of stone. 
carved into the stone was a riddle that had confounded the bravest souls for a long, long time. With a deep breath, she read it aloud. To break the curse, wisdom you must find. In the echoes of the past, secrets on wind. Speak the sorcerer's name, reveal his strife, and you shall free him from eternal life. Abe pounded the riddle for hours, tracing her fingers over the enigmatic characters. Finally, it came to her like a whisper from the wind. The name of the sorcerer was revealed in the old symbols. She altered the sorcerer's name and a brilliant light enveloped her, blinding her momentarily. When the light receded, the ring had transformed. It was no longer a tin of darkness but a beacon of light, radiating warmth and hope. With the curse lifted, Abe returned to her village, where she was celebrated as a hero. The ring, now a symbol of wisdom and courage, was placed in the village's sacred shrine. Abe had not only freed the sorcerer's soul, but had also proved that even the most mysterious and cursed objects could be harnessed for the greater good. And so, in the village of Otu, Abe's tale was told for generations, a testament to the power of curiosity, courage and the enduring spirit of a young girl who had once dared to wear the mysterious ring of course. Once upon a time, in the mystical land of Owo, there was an annual event that everyone eagerly awaited. The Festival of the Magical Masquerade. It was a night when enchantment filled the air. And the townspeople gathered at the palace to celebrate with mysterious maxis. In Owo, magical creatures roamed freely and the inhabitants were always fascinated by their mystical ways. But on this special night, they could become someone else entirely, hiding their true identity behind honored Maxis. The story begins with three best friends who were very close, Kola, Kende, and Ade. They lived on the outskirts of Owo and had always dreamt of attending the Magical Masquerade Festival. Because of their simple lives and humble backgrounds, they were never invited. Determined to make their dreams come true, the three friends decided to create their own maxis. They gathered feathers, ribbons and sparkling beads to create the most exquisite disguises. Colors Max was adorned with flowers. Ken days with stars and a days with intricate patterns. As the day of the masquerade festival approached, excitement grew among the friends. They could hardly wait to experience the enchantment of the night and dance with magical beings. But fate had other plans for them. On the eve of the masquerade festival, a terrible storm brewed over our kingdom. Thunder roared and rain poured down heavily. The palace ground were flooded and it seemed like the event might be cancelled. The friends were heartbroken, fearing that their dreams would remain unfulfilled. But then, something magical happened. An old woman dressed in a cloak of shimmering moonlight appeared before them. Her name was Adimu Orisa the guardian of Owo's magic. Seeing the friend's disappointment, Adimu Orisa smiled warmly and waved her staff, creating a beautiful rainbow bridge to the palace. The masquerade must go on, she proclaimed. Amazed and grateful, Kola, Kende and Ade crossed the radiant bridge to the palace. The sight inside was breathtaking. Magical beings of all shapes and sizes twirled gracefully. Their maxes glinting under the golden statue. As Kola, Kende and Ade joined the celebration, they felt a sense of belonging and joy.
They danced with fairies, exchanged riddles and goblins, and even had a friendly chat with a wise old dragon. In the midst of the festivities, the friends encountered three mysterious figures, each marked differently. The first had the moon on their marks, the second a sun, and the third had stars. Curious, Kola, Kende and Ade asked them to join in a dance. As they swirled around the dance hall, the maxes of the mysterious figures glowed with radiant light. Suddenly, the maxes lifted, revealing the true identities of the three magical beings. They were the very essence of the moon, sun and stars. They are the spirit guardians who watched over Owo. The friends were away struck by the revelation and Adimu Orisa appeared once more. She explained that the magical masquerade was not just about wearing disguises but about embracing the magic within each person's heart. Kola, Kende and Adi understood that the true enchantment of the masquerade was the connection they made with others, the friendships they forged and the belief in their own magic. As the night drew to a close, the three friends bid farewell to the magical beings, promising to cherish the memories forever. They walked back home with their hearts full of gratitude and wonder. From that day on, the three remained the best of friends and their bond grew stronger, forever connected by the magical masquerade of Oho. And every year, as the enchanting events returned, they would wear their maxes of flowers, stars and intricate patterns, reminding themselves of the magic that lived within their souls. It was a long time ago, in a small village called Doma, ruled a king called Nuhu. King Nuhu is known far and wide for his wicked and treacherous reign. His reign was marked by cruelty, oppression, and a loss for power that seemed insatiable. The people of Doma suffered greatly under his rule, and whispers of rebellion echoed through the streets and hidden corners of the kingdom. King Nuhu was born into a noble family, inheriting the throne at a young age after the sudden demise of his father. From the beginning, his heart was consumed by a test for dominance and control. He imposed heavy taxes on the common people, seizing their hard-earned wealth to fund his lavish banquets and extravagant palace. The treasury grew fat while the people grew hungry and poorer by the day. His tyranny extended beyond the kingdom's coffers. King Nuhu's enforcers, known as the Black Guard, terrorized the community. The Black Guards crushed anyone who dares to rebel against King Nuhu by putting them in prison. Public floggings and even executions of the villagers became common sight in the once happy land of Doma. The situation worsened when Nuhu allied himself with dark sexorers, seeking to increase his power through forbidden magic. The kingdom was plunged into darkness as shadows creeped over the once beautiful bright lands of Doma. And tales of strange and evil creatures prowling the forest spread like white fire. The villagers grew desperate, their spirits crushed beneath the weight of Nuhu's malevolent reign. However, even in the darkest of times, hope can flicker like a lone candle in the night. A group of brave and determined individuals gathered secretly, born by their shared determination to overthrow King Nuhu and restore peace to Doma. They called themselves the Masu Enchin Doma. Led by a charismatic and corny strategist named Sambo, Masu Enchin Doma began planning their revolt. Sambo had a deep connection to the old ways of Doma, drawing strength from the tales of the kingdom's former glory. He knew that to defeat Nuhu, they needed not only to gather an army, but to rekindle the villagers' hope and faith. Through cautiousness and perseverance, Masu Enchi Doma spread their message, rallying the oppressed and downtrodden. 
As stories of their deeds spread, whispers of resistance turned into a resounding chorus of disagreement. Villagers, soldiers, and even some members of the Black Guard began to question their allegiance to King Nuhu. As the tide of rebellion grew, Nuhu's grip on the kingdom weakened. He responded with even greater brutality, unleashing his dark sorcery and devilish creations to quell the uprising. But the Masu ancient Doma fought back with courage and unity, their cause fueled by the promise of a brighter tomorrow. The final confrontation between King Nuhu's forces and the Masu ancient Doma took place on the fields outside Doma, as the sun set, casting a golden glow across the land. The two sides clashed in an epic battle that would determine the fate of Doma. With Sambo at their helm, the warriors of Masu ancient Doma fought valiantly, inspiring those around them to stand up against the wicked king. In the heart of the battle, Sambo faced off against King Nuhu himself. Their conflict, symbolic of the struggle between tyranny and freedom. With a combination of strategy, bravery and the recounted hope of the villagers, Masu ancient Doma emerged victorious. King Nuhu's reign of terror came crashing down and his dark magic was undone by a force more powerful than any spell. The resilience of the united villagers, Doma, began to heal as Nuhu's dark legacy was erased. Masu ancient Doma transitioned into leaders, guiding the kingdom toward a new era of prosperity and unity. The people, once oppressed and divided, now worked together to rebuild their lives and their land. The story of Nuhu, the wicked king, became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and the importance of standing up against injustice. And as Doma flourished, once more, its people celebrated their triumph over darkness, knowing that the light of hope could overcome even the most malevolent of rulers. Long, long ago, in the beautiful land of Gobir, there lived a young girl named Aisha. She was known throughout the village for her kind heart, sparkling eyes, and insatiable curiosity. Gobir was a place where magic was woven into the very fabric of life, and tales of hidden treasures and mystical artifacts were whispered around campfires. Aisha's family was simple, but they lived contentedly in their cozy cottage, surrounded by abundant green fields and colorful wild flowers. Aisha, however, often they dreamed about discovering something extraordinary that would change their lives. She yearned to bring a little more comfort to her family and her fellow villagers. One bright morning, while wandering deep into the mystical whispering woods, Aisha stumbled upon a place she had never seen before. At the center of this place stood an old oak tree. Its branches heavy with vibrant leaves that seemed to glow with an imaginary light. Beneath the tree lay an ancient magic pot with fine patterns designed into its surface. Aisha's heart raced as she approached the pot. It emitted a faint hum as if resonating with the very magic that surrounded it. She reached out and touched the pot, and a soft whisper filled her mind. Seeker of dreams, holder of hope, one wish I grant, within me I cope. In amazement, Aisha's eyes widened. Could this be the legendary magic pot of wealth she had heard about in the stories? Without hesitation, she closed her eyes and made her wish. I wish for prosperity to bless my family and my village. May this wealth be used for the betterment of all. As soon as she finished her wish, a warm glow enveloped her and the pot began to shimmer and emit a soft, radiant light. When the light faded, Aisha cautiously peered into the pot. To her astonishment, it was now filled with sparkling golden coins, precious gems and exquisite jewels. 
Aisha's heart swelled with gratitude and excitement as she realized the power of the magic pot. She carefully gathered the pot and its content and made her way back to the village. The news of her discovery spread like white fire and the entire village gathered to witness the extraordinary wealth that Aisha had brought forth. Aisha, through her nature, shared the wealth generously. She helped the villagers repair their homes, built a school for the children and established a healing center for the sick. The village flourished and a sense of unity and gratitude filled the air. As time passed, Aisha's fame as the guardian of the magic pot of wealth grew. Visitors from neighboring lands came to seek her advice and tales of her benevolence and wisdom spread far and wide. But Aisha remained humble and grounded, continuing to use the pot magic to bring prosperity and happiness to those in need. And so, the tale of Aisha and the magic pot of wealth become a legend, a beacon of hope for generations to come. The beautiful land of Gobid prospered not just in material wealth, but also in the richness of compassion and became a community that Aisha had ignited with her selfless heart and her extraordinary discovery. Once upon a time, in a small village situated deep into the forest called Lokun, lived a wicked witch doctor named Bumbu. Bumbu was feared by all the villagers for he used his dark powers to harm others and manipulate their lives. Bumbu had always been a loner and had never experienced love or kindness in his life. This lack of compassion twisted his heart and led him down the path of darkness. He was determined to become the most powerful witch doctor in the land, no matter the cost. One day, a young girl named Kaya fell gravely ill. Her parents tried every medicine and healer they could find, but nothing seemed to work. Desperate and scared, they decided to seek the help of Bombo, hoping his powerful magic could save their daughter. Bombo saw this as an opportunity to increase his influence over the village. He agreed to help Kaya, but in return, he demanded a hefty price. Kaya's parents, desperate to save their child, agreed to Bombo's terms. As Bombo began his dark incantations, the villagers gathered outside his hut, fearing the consequences of his actions. The night was filled with strange chants and ominous smoke, making the villagers shiver with dread. Hours passed, and finally, Bombo emerged from his hut, wearing a wicked grin on his face. He claimed that Kaya was cured but she had changed. She had lost her ability to speak and had a vacant look in her eyes. The villagers were relieved that their daughter was alive but they couldn't help but feel uneasy about Bombo's involvement. They began to realize that Bombo's magic came at a steep price and that he was far from a benevolent healer. Over time, Bombo's influence in the village grew stronger as he used his dark powers to manipulate situations and control people's lives. Fear gripped the villagers and they felt trapped under Bombo's sinister rule. One day, a brave young man named Juma decided he could no longer stand by and watch Bombo terrorize his village. Juma embarked on a journey to find a way to defeat the evil witch doctor and break the curse that had befallen Kaya. Through many trials and tribulations, Juma discovered a wise old sage who taught him the true power of kindness and compassion. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Juma returned to the village and challenged Bombo. In an epic battle of good versus evil, Juma's kindness and compassion proved to be more powerful than Bombo's dark magic. As Bombo's powers waned, the villagers began to see the error of their ways and turned against him. Defeated and powerless, Bombo was banished from the village and the curse on Kaya was lifted. The villagers learned that true strength came through love and unity, not from fear and manipulation. And so, the village lived happily ever after, free from the grip of Bombo, the evil witch doctor, and they embraced the power of kindness and compassion as their true source of strength. Once upon a time, in the heart of Obosi village, 
where the sun's rays danced upon the beautiful green lands and the aroma of exotic spices filled the air. There lived a clever and mischievous spider named Anasi. He was known far and wide for his cunning ways and quick wit, and his reputation often preceded him. One day, a severe drought befell the village, casting a shadow of despair upon the people. The crops withered, the rivers ran dry, and the animals grew weak. The village chief called for a meeting to find a solution to the crisis. As the villagers gathered beneath the ancient mango tree, Anasi, who always wants to seize an opportunity, emerged from the shadows, his eight legs moving in a graceful dance. Dear villagers, Anasi began, I have heard of a hidden oasis, a mystical lake of life, deep within the dense jungle. Its waters are said to possess the power to end this drought. The villagers exchanged skeptical glances, unsure of whether to trust the spider's words. Yet, their desperation led them to consider Anasi's proposition. The village chief finally spoke up. If you can guide us to this houses, Anasi, we shall reward you handsomely. With a gleam in his eyes, Anasi agreed. He spun a web of enchantment around the villagers, promising to lead them to the houses. The next morning, the village set out on the journey, following Anasi's intricate web trail deep into the heart of the jungle. As they trekked through thick foliage and faced numerous obstacles, Anasi's cleverness shone brightly. He navigated the group around treacherous cliffs and cunning outsmarted a fierce lion that blocked their path. Each time the villagers grew more impressed by his resourcefulness. Days turned into weeks and still Anasi led them forward, each day revealing more of his extraordinary intellect. His reputation as a trickster spider started to transform into one of leadership and wisdom. Even though the villagers' feet were sore and their spirits were weary, they pressed on. Fueled by the hope that Anasi's guidance would indeed lead them to salvation. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, they stumbled upon a hidden clearing. Before their eyes lay a sparkling oasis, its crystal clear waters shimmering in the sunlight. The villagers rejoiced, rushing to drink from the revitalizing pool. As the water touched their lips, a magical transformation occurred. The drought effect vanished and it started to rain heavily as life flowed back into the villagers of Obosi. With their village restored, the villagers turned to Anasi. With gratitude in their hearts, the once mischievous spider had proven himself a true hero and he was honored by the village with a grand feast in his honor. Anasi became a legend and his tales were passed down through generations teaching the value of wit, resourcefulness, and unity in the face of adversity. And so, in the heart of Obosi village, the legend of Anasi the spider lived on, reminding all who heard it that sometimes the most unlikely heroes can emerge from the shadows to bring light to the darkest of time.